Hi, my name is Luke Benick, and I'm here with 3Helix to talk to you guys about how you can use collagen hybridizing peptides for tissue engineering and SES page purposes. So before we get started, um, I'm going to go back a little bit and give you some background on how CHPs work uh, so you have a better understanding moving forward. So collagen fibers are based on a hierarchical organization where collagen fibers are made up of collagen fibrils, and these are composed of the collagen molecules. Now the collagen triple helix is actually composed of three individual alpha chains that come together and assemble to form the collagen triple helix. Now in a natural healthy collagen molecule this triple helix remains intact but it can be damaged and when it becomes damaged uh, it starts to unfold or unwind. You can think of this as uh, a section of rope where you have three separate pieces of twine that come together and they form a much stronger, more stable version of this rope, whereas individually they're a lot weaker. Now this is important because we designed our collagen hybridizing peptides to recognize that single stranded alpha chain uh, or that single twine molecule. So our CHP is based off a repeating sequence that contains glycine, proline, and hydroxyproline, which is found in high contents in natural collagen. And actually this sequence has a, the highest propensity to refold into the collagen triple helix. So once the, CH, or once the collagen fiber gets uh, degraded by enzymes such as MMPs, it exposes all these single-stranded collagen fibers um, that we can now target. So what we did is we attached fluorescent molecules and biotin onto our short CHP sequences, and it allows us to then stain or image uh, or locate places where there is high amounts of collagen degradation or collagen remodeling. So we have here a single CHP hybridizing with two strands of collagen, and here we have two CHPs hybridizing with one strand of collagen. So again, going back to our initial example, we have this nice intact structure when it becomes damaged either by enzymatic, mechanical, thermal, or even chemical ways, uh, it starts to unfold and unwind. And our CHP is a small peptide that can then go in and rehybridize with the collagen strands to reform that collagen triple helix. Now you can think of this as the same way that primers bind to DNA during PCR. Um, it's also important to know that once the collagen triple helix actually gets damaged, it will spontaneously begin to unfold at body temperature. And so this experiment actually verifies this. Uh, so we have an intact collagen molecule and we tested CHP binding to it at room temperature as well as 37. And you really see there's not much difference between the two um, intensities from CHP binding. However, once we cleave natural collagen and then image it again with CHP at 37 and room temperature, you see this great increase of CHP intensity, uh, which indicates that there's a higher level of CHP binding, which indicates there's a higher level of damaged collagen. And this confirms the fact that in, once it's intact, the tr collagen triple helix um, is stable at 37, but once it's damaged at 37 degrees C, this triple helical molecule begins to spontaneously unwind. Uh, this inset image just shows the specificity for CHPs for damaged collagen as opposed to intact collagen. And here we have an SCS page gel, again showing the specificity that CHP has for collagen fibers, or damaged collagen fibers. We have collagen type 1, collagen 2, and collagen 4. You see these nice bands using the fluorescently labeled CHP, and you don't see any bands show up for fibronectin or laminin, which are other major components of the extracellular matrix. Uh, and finally, this image to the right, we have a collagen, and we also have a cell lysate, and again, the CHP only binds to damaged collagen, whereas the Komasi blue stain here, uh, you see a lot of bands for collagen as well as the numerous bands found in the cell lysate. So tissue decellularization is an important to the field of tissue engineering, and this is because when researchers create scaffolds, they oftentimes will use cells to create this ECM first, and then they will need to remove the cells before use so that they can reduce the chance of an immune response. So what we did in this experiment is we use porcine ligaments and we uh, have a healthy tissue here and then we compared common tissue decellularization detergents such as SDS, CHAPS, Triton X100, and SD and you can visually see that SDS causes a high amount of collagen damage 
um, to the scaffolds, where Triton X100 causes slight damage, and both SD and CHAPS caused no damage. And when we quantified this signal intensity, again, the same held true, where SES and Triton 100 had a significant increase in the amount of damage caused um, to the scaffolds, as indicated by the higher levels of CHP fluorescence, while CHAPS and SD did not have a statistically significant difference from the native tissue. Um, so, we also looked at second harmonic generation, and again, we compared the four detergents that we compared on the left side, but we also included a heated control sample. So, in second harmonic generation, uh, you get a nice signal intensity with a structure, but as soon as something becomes unstructured, you lose that signal intensity. And the inverse is true for CHP signaling. So, we see with the heated section, which has the completely heat denatured the collagen triple helix. We have a high CHP signal here, um, and we still see damage from SDS page, or excuse me, SDS detergent. And when we quantified those signals, again, the difference between SDS to pair to CHAPS, SD, and TRI100 was significant. And when you look at SHG, you see that CF fluorescence and SHG signal are actually inverse. Uh, and this is important because you can now use CHPs as a way to determine the health of the scaffold that you are currently using. Uh, one other example that CHPs can be helpful in is in cell migration. Uh, so we did an ex a 3D cell experiment where we had uh, MDA, MB231 breast cancer cells migrating in a 3D collagen matrix, and we stained it with our fluorescently labeled CHP. And what you see is on the polarizing edges of the cell, when it's moving through the matrix, it actually causes higher amounts of collagen remodeling. Um, and you can see that here in this video. Uh, actin is stained red, CHP is green, and the nuclei in blue. So again, on the polarizing edges, you see higher CHP intensity. Um, and this second um, image shows the SHG signal as well. So in conclusion, uh, I hope that I've shown you that CHPs are highly specific for denatured collagen. They can be used to identify collagen in SDS page and Western blotting, and then they are useful in detecting damaging collagen for tissue engineering purposes. So if you have any technical questions, again, my name is Luke Benick. Please contact me and I'll do my best to answer you. Uh, I wanted to introduce the rest of our team, Helen King, who will be in charge of ordering and shipping. And then if you have any new ideas or applications, please feel free to reach out to our business development, um, Dr. Mike Kirkness. And we're always open to working with you guys and helping you guys advance your research. Thank you very much.